Marriage, a serious commitment where two people come together and vow eternal love and mutual fidelity, but in some situations, this does not always happen in a loving way. In certain moments, everything can end unexpectedly at the altar, and often without imagining the consequences. In this story, we will discuss a case where this happened. Peter and Jasmine were a couple who had been dating for four years, engaged and committed to each other. They seemed to love each other deeply, and both families seemed to approve of the relationship, everything was going well. However, what Jasmine did not know was that her fiancé Peter had a secret affair with another woman named Annabelle. They had been having an affair for two years, but Peter never left Jasmine. Jasmine loved Peter with all her heart and thought she had found the true love of her life. Peter was willing to end his relationship with Annabelle and move forward with Jasmine, as he didn't want to be seen as shameless and unfaithful, and saw Annabelle as just a passing flame. But weeks before the wedding, Annabelle had news for Peter, she was pregnant, and the child was his. At that moment, Peter felt a range of mixed emotions, but his child could not grow up without a father, so he decided to be with Annabelle, and this ultimately brought them closer together. The unfaithful couple made vows of love and promised to be together forever, with their child uniting them. The wedding day arrived, and everyone was waiting for the union of Peter and Jasmine. Jasmine was excited and happy, her friends and family looked on joyfully, unaware of what was about to happen. An hour passed, and Jasmine grew anxious about the groom's delay. Finally, the phone rang, and Jasmine answered, it was Peter on the other end of the line, saying. Jasmine. I'm so sorry. But we can't get married. I love another woman, and we're running away together. I'm so sorry. I wish you happiness. She's pregnant, and we're having a baby. My child won't grow up without a father. Jasmine was shocked and devastated. Over the phone, she said. How can you be such a scoundrel? Peter. You are despicable. You deceived me all this time. And Peter, nervous, replied. I'm so sorry, Jasmine. I didn't want it to be like this. I was in a hidden relationship with Annabelle. But I never left you. I had confused feelings. But now I've found out I love Annabelle and I'll live with her and my child. Forgive me. I wish you happiness and hope you find another man who truly loves you. It wouldn't be fair to keep deceiving you and myself. I'm sorry, Jasmine. In tears, Jasmine said, I did everything for you, and this is how you repay me. Okay. I'll just tell you one thing. In this life, everything is paid back, and one day life will charge you for what you did to me. This isn't a curse. It's fate. And Jasmine hung up on Peter. With a sad and disappointed expression, she told the guests. To everyone here, it is with great sadness that I announce there will be no wedding. The groom broke up with me over the phone and ran off with his pregnant lover. Peter is a disgrace and a shameless man. He deceived me and made me look like a fool. I'm so sorry, everyone. You're free to go. If you want to take your gifts back, that's fine. At that moment, everyone looked at Jasmine with pity as she was heartbroken and devastated. Peter's family apologized for what happened, saying they didn't raise him like that and never intended for Jasmine to suffer. Jasmine saw that her fiancé's family was not at fault and said goodbye to them. Still wearing her wedding dress, she left the venue, supported by her own family. Jasmine suffered a great deal, and her parents and siblings supported her through it all. Her friends also stood by her side. Meanwhile, on the other side of town at an airport, Peter and Annabelle boarded a plane and moved to another state to escape the disapproving and indignant glances they would face from people. Annabelle and Peter lived their lives and were now a family. Jasmine cried and was utterly devastated by the wedding that never happened. 
she became increasingly depressed and sad. Three years later. After several psychiatric treatments and with the help of her family and friends, Jasmine bounced back. She started running, going to the gym, studying, and working at a company. One day, at her new job, she met a man named Nick, a young, elegant, handsome, and refined man from a wealthy family who owned the company. Despite his wealth and high social position, he was very humble and honorable. Jasmine was Nick's secretary, and he treated her very well. He never used his power to humiliate or abuse his employees and subordinates, always treating everyone with equality and justice. Jasmine didn't hide her middle-class background, as she was proud of her roots. Over time, Nick developed feelings for Jasmine, and he seemed to like her very much. So, one day, with all his courage, Nick asked Jasmine. Hello, Jasmine. Would you like to go out with me? Maybe hang out one of these days? Jasmine was moved and honored by his request. Out of respect for her boss, she accepted, although she wasn't looking for a relationship with anyone due to the lingering effects of being abandoned at the altar and her lost trust in men. She preferred living a single life. Nick noticed her indifference and tried not to pressure her, respecting her feelings. However, her indifference only fueled his determination. He wouldn't give up on her, and their friendship grew. Nick became more in love and determined to win Jasmine's heart, so he organized a dinner at his house and invited her. Nick then confessed his feelings, saying, Jasmine. I've been in love with you since the first time I saw you. I can't get you out of my head. Will you be my girlfriend? Jasmine was touched and deeply moved by Nick's request, but she hesitated, trembling, and surprised, saying. I'm very honored, Nick. But you come from a high position, and I'm from a simple, humble family. I have no titles and wasn't born with a silver spoon like you. Are you sure about this? With a smile on his face, Nick replied, Jasmine. My parents were middle class like you, and they fought hard to get where they are. They taught me many principles. Thanks to them, I am the incredible person I am today, and I owe them for the good upbringing they provided. I love you, and I want to make you happy. Jasmine, who had been nurturing feelings for Nick for some time, decided to give herself a chance and accepted Nick's proposal. Nick and his family seemed to like Jasmine, and she got along very well with Nick's siblings and parents. In parallel, Peter was living his fairy tale with Annabelle and their child in another state, missing his family and at the same time fearing their reaction if he returned to his home state. Two years passed, and one day at Nick's house, in front of his parents and siblings, Nick knelt before Jasmine and showed her a wedding ring, saying, Jasmine, will you marry me? Be my wife and the lady of my life. Upon seeing the wedding ring, Jasmine felt a mix of sadness and joy in her mind. Seeing Jasmine's reaction, Nick asked, What's wrong, my love? Did I make a mistake? Tell me what's wrong, and I'll fix it right away. Jasmine, moved, said, No, Nick. You didn't do anything wrong. But seeing this ring brought back memories. Nick's mother asked, What happened, my dear? Explain it to us. Whatever it is, we'll help. Nick added, tell us, my love. We're here to listen. Whatever it is, we'll understand. So Jasmine told her entire story about her wedding where she was abandoned at the altar, her unfaithful fiancé who ran away with his pregnant mistress, and all her suffering. Nick and his family were moved by Jasmine's story and felt very sorry for her. Nick then opened up to Jasmine and said, My love. I know how you feel. I've been through that too, and I know what it's like. Surprised, Jasmine said, What do you mean, Nick? Someone in your position and with your status who has everything couldn't possibly go through that. My God. The world is so small. Nick emotionally replied, 
I was about to get married three years before I met you. My future wife left me at the altar and ran away with an ex-boyfriend. Everything you suffered, I also suffered. I had depression, cried a lot, and even lost the meaning of my own life. But thanks to my family, I recovered, and now I'm here. I know how you feel because I felt it too. Jasmine held Nick's hand, and in front of his family, confident that she had found true love, she accepted his proposal. After six months of preparation for the big occasion, Nick was at the altar waiting for his beloved. Jasmine arrived in a beautiful dress, and in front of all the guests, they got married, and their families were emotional. Three months later, Jasmine was pregnant, which left Nick overjoyed. The happiness of motherhood and fatherhood made the couple very happy. Meanwhile, Peter and Annabelle were living their fairy tale, but they were about to be surprised. One day, Annabelle and Peter were at their home when someone knocked on the door. To their surprise, a ghost from Annabelle's past appeared in her life. It was a man named Blake. Nervously, Annabelle said. I can't believe it. How did you find me, and what are you doing here, you idiot? Also nervous, Blake replied, it doesn't matter how I found you. Where's our son? I want to see our son. Screaming, Annabelle said, get out of here. Leave now. However, Blake grabbed Annabelle and said, it doesn't matter. I want both of you. You and our son. I love you both. Blake hugged Annabelle and kissed her on the mouth. At that moment, Peter arrived and saw the scene, saying, Annabelle. What are you doing with this guy? I want an explanation. At that moment, Blake sarcastically said to Annabelle and Peter, you traded me for this guy. A guy who left his fiancé at the altar and is raising another man's child. What an idiot are you? Angry, Peter tried to confront Blake, but Annabelle tried to calm them down. Mockingly and sarcastically, Blake said to Peter, that boy you're raising isn't your son. I'm the real father of this child. Surprised, Peter said, Annabelle. Tell me this is a lie. Nervous and stuttering, Annabelle didn't know what to say. Blake continued, in fact. This woman was with you only to get money from you all these years. You can do a DNA test. She didn't tell me about the pregnancy, and I found out through a friend. She was with both of us. But the real father is me. At that moment, Peter's world collapsed, and everything he believed in turned out to be a huge lie. In tears, Peter said, how could you do this, Annabelle? I left my future wife at the altar to be with you. I fled to another state, left everything for you, and this is how you repay me. Crying, Annabelle said, think of the boy. He's not to blame for anything. Peter replied, enough. Annabelle. You won't manipulate me anymore. Here's the real father of this child. I'm not obliged to support a child that isn't mine. But since this house is in your name and I gave it to you as a gift, you can keep it. But my financial help is over. I regret leaving a wonderful woman like Jasmine for someone like you. I'm going back to my home state to find Jasmine and ask for forgiveness. Your manipulation game is over, Annabelle. I never want to see you again. Get out of my life. Peter went to the bedroom, packed his bags, and left the house. He said goodbye to the boy, acknowledging that the child was innocent. Annabelle and Blake were left there. Blake tried to hug Annabelle, but she rejected him, frustrated that her scheme had been discovered. Peter traveled by plane again, returning to his home state, and saw the consequences of his actions. His friends turned their backs, his family rejected him, and all that rejection left him sad. Sobbing, he begged people to tell him about Jasmine, but nobody would talk. He went to Jasmine's family to apologize, but they ruthlessly kicked him out. 
Only one friend gave him Jasmine's address, warning him he wouldn't like what he'd see, and Peter went to visit her, to ask for her forgiveness and try to win Jasmine back. Arriving at the place, Peter saw that it was a mansion. Jasmine was caressing her seven-month pregnant belly. Peter knocked on the door, and Jasmine answered, surprised, and said, Peter. It's been a while, huh? I haven't seen you since you left me at the altar and ran away with your pregnant mistress. In tears and on his knees, Peter said, Jasmine. My love. I came to ask for your forgiveness and a new chance to start over and... But Peter noticed Jasmine's belly and said, You're pregnant. Jasmine. Gently and kindly, Jasmine replied, Yes. I'm seven months pregnant. I'm going to be a mother. Seeing this scene, Peter felt sad and completely devastated. Jasmine asked, And your child with your mistress, Annabelle? Aren't you the father? Crying, Peter said, That child wasn't mine. Annabelle deceived me. I wasn't the father. It was all a scheme planned by that wretched woman. Jasmine said, I'm sorry, Peter. Now I'm married and happy. I met an amazing man who truly loves me. And as you saw, I'm going to be a mother. Humbly, on his knees and crying, Peter said, Jasmine. Forgive me. Come back to me. We love each other. As I said, Annabelle deceived me. That child wasn't mine. I promise everything will be different, and I will never cheat on you or deceive you again. Now I know what you felt after discovering Annabelle's betrayal. Leave this guy, and if necessary, I'll even raise this child growing inside you as if it were my own. I'm willing to do anything to get back with you. I still love you. I know you're the woman of my life. I've never stopped thinking about you. Kindly, Jasmine said, Peter. I forgave you a long time ago. But I don't love you anymore. You caused me so much pain and suffering. Now I'm truly happy. I'm sorry. I wish you find new love and that everything works out in your life. Now, please, don't come back here. My husband might not like my ex fiance bothering us at our doorstep. Goodbye, Peter. I wish you all the best. And may God help you. Jasmine slowly closed the door and went inside her house. At Jasmine's doorstep, Peter cried inconsolably, utterly sad and devastated. He remembered Jasmine's words on the day of his escape with Annabelle, felt immense remorse, and saw that life had charged him for everything he had done to Jasmine. After completing her pregnancy, Jasmine gave birth to a boy, which made Nick and Jasmine happy. Everyone was happy. Meanwhile, Peter had to suffer the consequences of his choice, no woman wanted to be involved with him, his family wanted nothing to do with him, and his friends cut ties. Peter found himself abandoned and alone. So, Peter went to the nearest bus station and moved to another city. Missing Jasmine every day and keeping as a memento a photo of Jasmine and him from their engagement days. Moral of the story. Never trade a true love for someone who might betray and deceive you. The person who truly loves you may no longer be yours, leaving only remorse and sadness behind. When they say love endures all things, it refers to difficulties, suffering, and trials, not betrayal and infidelity. I hope you enjoyed this story, my friends. Watch other stories on our channel appearing on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Until the next video.